and we made biscuits. And I remember making biscuits. I went home and made biscuits. And everybody in the, around the table ate a biscuit without saying a word about it until everybody was done and the biscuits were all gone. And then my dad looked at me and said, how much salt did you put in there? And that's when I learned there's a difference between one-fourth a teaspoon and four teaspoons. So every time the train stopped, a new group of 4-H'ers got on it. The powers that be decided basketball was way too strenuous for girls. And at that time, the girls' team had six players, and you didn't cross the center line. Okay, the other thing that we didn't get into it all were the other programs. And the one that I'm not saying was the first, but probably the strongest, was the Girl Scout program. And my mother started it and was the leader for a number of years from the time I was 10 years old. But then she organized other leaders to be leaders. In fact, the morning she died, she had a meeting to organize the new leaders for the new year scheduled for her house. And Doris Mogan, who was going to take over her job as the organizer, talked her into letting them meet at Doris's house instead of our house. And my mother went to the hospital that afternoon and died that night but she was right there running it until the end. But one of the most exciting things I think about that was that we actually had a Girl Scout house. And it was a log house down behind where the county, road, county yards were on the northwest corner as you go out. There's sort the of the county big stockyards. What county yards? Uh, county machinery yards. The and, road crew. And where left. is that now? What is the big um, metal building that blew down? Oh, Zigger Shop. Is that at the far at north the, side? At yeah. the highway right oh, before it goes out yeah. of town. Yeah. Bill Schultz's shop. Okay, that's... I guess Schultz, not Zigger. <laughs> okay, um, over the, the house itself was on the other side of that fence. Okay. And we painted the whole thing, the eaves on it, the eaves, the peak on it, was painted a dark green, and then we painted all the woodwork dark green. I don't know that we did anything to the logs, but I do remember it was a log house. But we had the inside cleaned up, and I think we used that for four or five years. We would have campouts down there, and we were able to cook down there. I don't think we actually had a stove. But, but we were campers. We could do everything there. So when she said organizing leaders, was there a leader for each age group or was there more than one troop in town? No, there was just the one troop, but there were the brownies and the intermediates and the seniors. And I suppose when I hit 10, the brownies were formed, but she, she had um, Miss Jones, Green Locke, and a Mrs. I think it was L-O-O-C-H, Locke, a home ec teacher. And when Reens first started teaching, well that would have been, I would have been in high school at that time, but they did a lot of the camping with the girls when we were there. But other mothers were there. Alma Jensen was a scout leader and Doris and I'm getting generations a little mixed up. I could name a lot more who were scout leaders when you girls right. were in scouts. Right. But I think the scout program carried through 
those years because you were almost ready to go in when Doris took over. And I know that group. I have the scrapbook in there with pictures of all those girls. Not so many of the earlier ones. And at that time, the scout program was stronger in Hinsdale than the 4-H program. And mostly, I think, because the 4-H program was hitting different rural areas. Beaverton had a strong club, and then we had the town club, and the North Country had a couple clubs there. So it really wasn't until well, it would have been when I hit high school that the town club was strong. So who was your 4-H leader? My very first meeting was with Enid Meharry, and she lived at the, where the White Bridge is, where Jones's house is now. And at that time, it was more of a log structure. And, well, Browns lived there when I was in high school, but Enid and Charlie lived there at the time. She had the 4-H club. And we made biscuits, and I remember making biscuits. I went home and made biscuits, and everybody in the, around the table ate a biscuit without saying a word about it until everybody was done and the biscuits were all gone. And then my dad looked at me and said, how much salt did you put in there? And that's when I learned there's a difference between one fourth a teaspoon and four teaspoons. <laughs> but I always thought they were pretty nice to have eaten them without complaining first. And the name of your club was? I'm not sure what it was at that time. A little later it was the Sunshine Club. And then I remember <coughs> Charlotte was in the, in the day that we changed the name of the club to the 4-H, 4-H Club. And nobody was supposed to tell what the 4-H stood for. But it was the Hinsdale Happy Home Helpers. And we did. But at that time, you, you <coughs> belonged to a club, to a sewing club, or a baking, a cooking club. It wasn't taking, belonging to one club and then taking all of the projects. So we learned to sew, and we all sewed exactly the same thing. And we learned to cook, and we all learned to make biscuits. And then, Later, and I think probably Miss Holiday came when I was in high school. And as an agent, she was just very, she was from the Midwest, and just very, very knowledgeable about the 4-H program. And she had us doing things. And it may have been the change in time, too, but all of the older kids in the club, or not in the club, in the county, usually got, we'd, we'd have 20, 25 delegates to the, to the state Congress. Congress every year because she organized it so everybody was a winner in something different. So they were, I remember one year I had a, yeah, I don't know what the demonstration was originally, but I used a cream cheese dressing on a salad in this demonstration. So she switched the organization from a general home ec cooking demonstration and entered it as a dairy foods demonstration because it used that, but that gave one more of the kids a trip. So in those days when they went to Congress, they had a car on the train. Oh, 
Oh, that is an experience. I have that whole thing written up someplace. Yes, they put, the Great Northern put an old, actually two old cars, one old car on at the state line and picked up the Bainville and the Culbertson and the Wolf Point kids from there. So every time the train stopped, a new group of 4-H'ers got on it. And when we got to Haver, they put a second car there because there were that many, they needed the two cars. And the two cars went down through Great Falls to Helena. And in Helena, they had to chain, we had to get off the Great Northern. And they took us over some way or another with all our luggage to the mill, is it the Milwaukee station there? Yeah. The one with the big tower. And there they had four 4-H trains, or cars, the two that had come down from here and two more down from the Flathead in Missoula joined. So by the time we got to Bozeman, we knew half of the kids who were there. And each year we met new ones and every time it would stop, I think our closest group was the Blaine County and Hill County kids. So every time the train would stop, a new group would get on, the whole mix process, you'd meet new people, you'd see the ones you had known from Congress last year and everybody was very anxious to go to Congress just just because it was. We didn't do the sport tra traveling we do now. I think when I was in freshman and sophomore basketball, we had two out-of-town basketball games. Just because transportation during the war, no cars, we didn't have school buses. It was a just less travel, but to get on that train with all of these other people. So what is your story about girls basketball? Your mother coached girls basketball in the 20s? She came here in 27 and she coached basketball then. And Reen coached when I was a freshman and sophomore, but then the powers that be decided basketball was way too strenuous for girls. And at that time, the girls' team had six players, three guards and three forwards, and you didn't cross the center line. You played, you, the, our, our team forwards and your team guards were on one half, and the opposite because it was so strenuous for girls to go all the way across the full floor. So you were on either offense or defense the whole time? You were either a forward or a guard the whole time. I get a little confused with your modern terms. I do know the difference mm -hmm. between <laughs> offense and defense. <laughs> so the powers that be said no more basketball, yeah. and what was their leverage to get rid of that? powers that be use the powers that be for leverage. Okay. You don't think there was the actual set threat to remove your accreditation? I don't know. Well, <laughs> it wasn't just our school. It was from the state coming down? Yeah, this was, it wasn't just a school regulation. And every, uh, the people I talked to who went through that, still are very angry about being told that we couldn't play basketball as well as the boys could. But the game was different than boys. Mm -hmm. Boys played the whole floor with five players and we played half a floor with six. Now you mentioned losing accreditation. The high school actually lost accreditation at one point in the yeah. early days, didn't it? They hadn't gained it, oh, okay. I think. That was when they had the West Side School. Mm. And that, that was why I was excited about seeing the pictures. 
that I now am pretty convinced were the West Side School, and I had always labeled them as the Happy Flat School. Mm -hmm. But the Happy Flat School, I don't think, was the frame building. It was a log building. But yes, the, um, my dad took his first year in high school here, and that would have been 14 or 15. And he graduated three years later in 18. And one of the reasons that the family was sent back to Fargo Sacred Heart Academy for school is because the school here wasn't accredited yet. And something we saw said that there were two juniors the year the school opened, and the next year they were the first graduates. But, and I'm not sure exactly, I think we did read when it was accredited. I, I think those two, that class of two was 1918, because I think it's the 100th graduating class coming up next year. Okay. Oh. And that would have been the year his graduating class if he'd been there. And it was accredited by the time that, by 1918. Yeah, that makes sense, because I think my grandma Donna had to go to Glasgow to, to graduate high school. Because I think she had started here, but because it wasn't accredited, accredited yeah, you couldn't go finish on. here. Um, well, my youngest aunt went to didn't graduate. The two older children were a year apart and they went there and for three years and they both graduated there. And the that was Marge and Stubbs? Stubbs and Toots. Oh. But Marge was younger and when she came back she went into, she stayed with uh, aunt and uncle in Butte and went into Butte High School and she was going to graduate there because it was accredited. And we have one postcard from her to the folks showing the school she was attending. But they closed the school that fall because of the flu epidemic. So Butte closed. And she came back here and went to school in Glasgow that year. Then she came out and went to Hinsdale the next year. But she graduated eventually in 22 from Glasgow and went into what they had established as an education program. If you specialized in that your last two years in high school, you were qualified to teach in country schools in the state. And then most of those teach, most of the girls who taught then went back and finished two years of college before their career was over. Or if they taught after they were older, they went back and got those, the two year. And that was the kind of deal your mom did? Your mom would teach for a while and then go to school for a while? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't quite the same. She went, she took two years at the University of Minnesota and then because of her father's health came home and took all the credits she could. She lived in Breckenridge and Wapaton was right across the river and the Wapaton State School was there so she took all the credits she could there. But while she was home helping her mother with the dad and she also taught in one or two of the country schools right close to there. And then her, her goal was the four-year degree. And she said she walked into the dean's office at the University of North Dakota and handed him her transcripts and said, what can I graduate in in one year? And that it turned out to be a combination of political science and English. <laughs> <laughs> that, at that time, political science was not a good field, for, especially for women, but then she taught in North Dakota a couple of years after that, and then applied for the job here. But, it, but she went through, I think, the requirements for actually teaching 
in your rural schools were pretty much who's available. Who can get to the school. Yeah, who could get to the school. The, what They said the first teacher, was it in Hinsdale, was the doctor's wife, Sounds Dr. Minnick's right. wife. So do you remember a big influx of country school kids coming into town for freshman year or the one, one I do remember were Ione and Harold Frost, but she was here. I think she, I think they came in. Maybe she came in for the eighth grade. But they, what I remember was that Harold was a year older than Iona, so they held Harold until Iona was ready to come into school, which doesn't make sense that she came in the eighth grade. We'd have to check with Gloria for on that one. Well, did there used to be an exam. You had to pass a state exam oh, yes. to graduate from eighth grade. Yes. And so they might have brought kids to eighth grade in town to pass that exam if they felt okay, they weren't that learning might. at the country school. Um, I ran into your dad's eighth grade examination page. Oh, how did he do? Well, I don't know how he did. He passed, and I think that was the, the goal of most of those kids. <laughs> the how was not one of the... But I just found, the, in going through some of the things in the den the other day, found those eighth grade exam results. And Were that they was, administered at the school, or did the county superintendent county handle those? The super, superintendent handled those. 